okay uh, today we are going to uh, have a brief tutorial on PSSC uh, as far as load flow analysis is concerned and we are going to cover the contents as given in lab manual 6 so in lab manual 6 as you can see we have a uh, 7 bus system and this is 132 66 and 11 kb uh, system so this is 132 slash 11 kb system and we are going to implement this as our base case in pssc so let's open pssc you have to use explore version and you can easily download it from uh, siemens website so first of all i will go to the file option and new and then i will select this option that is case data over here i will select the base frequency 50 hertz and then ok so this will basically create a network data file for my uh, case study uh, remember in pssc we have two files um, as far as any case is concerned the first file is the case data file and the second file is the single line diagram so uh, again you have to go to the file option new and then you have to select the diagram right so now whatever i will draw on this screen the data corresponding to that single line diagram will be entered over here so the first option which you should check is you have to right click and this option bind items should be checked why if this item is unchecked or, or sorry this option is unchecked then whatever you will enter over here that will not be entered the data uh, corresponding to that will not be entered in this uh, network data file so let's uh, start drawing our case so over here we have seven buses so I will draw the complete uh, system and then I will enter the data but a good practice in PSAC is to enter data um, uh, side by side right so that your PSAC should not crash but this is a small system so that problem is not going to occur so uh, you can insert the bus using this option right select this and just click on the screen okay for the time being i'm not uh, making any changes and this so just do okay and then press the escape key so you have the first bus okay uh, i have to insert the seven buses so what i can do I should have the uh, symbol like this right so 101 201 301 and so on okay now I have to press the escape key as I have entered the seven buses now I will uh, uh, basically try to have the same orientation as that given in the base case so this is bus A then I have bus B like this ok I have inserted one extra bus I will delete that one you can uh, basically uh, enlarge this bus by selecting and dragging your cursor key like this so this is bus 1, 101, 201 is over here, right, then uh, 301 after 201. Okay, this bus is extra, so I can simply delete it um, by uh, selecting and pressing the delete key. So this is 201, and then over here you are having the 301 bus, 601 bus.
forget about the color scheming we will set it later on uh, the colors which you can see over here these are black ones these are green ones and blue ones we are going to set it later on so i have entered all the buses next i will add the transmission lines you can see we have uh, four transmission lines these are 50 kilometer links conductor 40 kilometer and then 10 kilometer so i will add the transmission lines for transmission line, you have to select the branch option and after selecting the branch option just select the bus okay you should have this plus sort of symbol once you select the branch you have to click on the sending bus and then the bus on which you have to terminate just click it once so this will be entered like this and i have to enter an other transmission line like this okay and you can see uh, I have another transmission line over here lastly I have transmission line over here okay okay next I will press the escape key so then I will add the transformers uh, now in PSAC transformers uh, th this is basically the symbol of tap so tap changer is always installed on the high voltage side since this is 132 uh, 66 and 11 kV buses so it means your tap changer should be at 132 kV bus rather than 11 kV bus right the reason is that uh, the tap changer is installed on high voltage side because uh, um, the current uh, on that side will be lesser and so um, um, the interrupting lesser current is uh, easier as compared to interrupting a huge amount of current secondly uh, your uh, high voltage winding is placed outside uh, when you are constructing the transformer the low voltage winding is placed inside so this is the reason so i have to add the four transformers let's come back to the screen okay uh, before adding anything further i want to uh, have a cross check whether uh, my these items are appearing in network data or not so let's go to network data and you can see in buses options now we have seven buses the kilovolt means the bus voltage has not been specified yet and the code of buses that is which bus is uh, load bus which bus is swing bus that has also not been specified yet so secondly uh, I have added the transmission lines you can check your transmission lines by going into branch and you can see four transmission lines have been added and it similarly if I want to check the transformers this option is to be retained as it is I will select two winding as instead of AC line so you can see now nothing appears over here it means no, uh, none of the transformers has been added yet so you can now add the transformers i will select a two winding transformer from here okay now oh, uh, i can't see the okay option you can simply uh now the taskbar uncheck this option if this is already checked and you can simply drag select your taskbar and drag it over here and press okay right the other way around is you can simply press the enter key okay so uh, over here I have transformer I have to insert transformer over here also again select it Okay, uh, now I have done this intentionally you can see my both transformers are being overlapped but you can do you can select a transformer and now you can move this green dot downward right but still the uh, these are being overlapped so what I have to change the size of this bus first of all then select the transformer again I can't see the dotted portion so I have to select this option drag this dot by selecting it over here and you can see this 
right so if you want to ch uh, change the orientation of any object you can simply select it uh, if I want to change the orientation of this line I have to uh, select this portion or this segment of the transformer I have to basically change the position of the screen circle right by selecting the uh, left button key of the mouse so uh, this is how you can insert the transformers next I have to insert the loads now uh, loads are usually at uh, 11 KB or very rarely at 132 KB buses so we have three types of loads first of all I will add the load you can select this option for the load Next, I will add the data of these components. First of all, I will add the machine data. So, uh, in machines, you are always provided with the rated power that is PGen, which is 100 megawatt. It means each machine is of 100 megawatts. So, let's double click this machine and you have to add the gen. Uh, P gen as 100 megawatt and P max is usually 1.1 or you can say 110 percent of the P gen so this would be 110 and P min is 50 percent of P gen so this should be 50 megawatt this is basically uh, what we uh, usually do that P max is set as 110 means these are the limits of the generator in which your generator is going to be uh, operated and your minimum real power is specified as 50% of P gen. Now for a generator Q gen is never specified it depends upon the response of the system or how many line losses are uh, taking place Q gen is set according to that. So for a generator you have to specify P gen uh, this is usually given and the power factor of the generator is given based upon that power factor and the given rated power of that is the real power you can basically compute your base of the apparent power and for these limits you usually use a 110% of the rated P and 50% of the rated P over here but you have to specify the Q max and Q min usually Q max and Q min are specified based upon the given power factor of your um, generator and based upon that power factor you basically can decide these values we are going to discuss that in our lab manual 7 but in lab manual 6 the values of q max and q min have been provided to you so what we have done so far we have specified the rated real power of your generator and the upper limit of your generator and the lower limit of your generator and Q gen that is not to be specified and Q max and Q min are given to you but if it's not specified you can compute it based upon the power factor and how we are going to discuss in our uh, lab manual 7 so currently this is 60 and this is minus 20 I'm going to specify it like this 60 and minus 20 right next uh, this power factor is not to be entered anywhere in this generator, right? Uh, and this is basically used to compute these uh, reactor power limits. But since it's given to us, that's why there's no need to compute. But we can, we have to use this power factor in order to compute this S base. And 100 divided by 0.85 uh, is approximately 117. X trans is the um, impedance of the generator step up transformer this is the reactance of your generator so 0.2 is the reactance of your generator and this X trans is 0.15 now we are doing the implicit modeling of this generator step up transformer what is implicit modeling implicit modeling is basically you cannot uh, monitor the real and vector power flow through this transformer and usually the generator step up transformer uh, reactance is specified within it right okay what else we 
uh, scheduled is usually kept hard in one per unit but I'm not going to change it for a while you can change it from here uh, I'm going to retain it as it is and we are going to change it later on in order to see its impact so uh, for a generator section you have to specify the P gen and P max P min this is 110%, this is 50%, Q gen is never specified, Q max and Q min are specified. If not given to you, you can compute it based upon the given power factor. You can compute the base of the parent power uh, by the given power factor and the rated real power. This is the reactance of the generator and this is the reactance of the generator step up transformer. Okay. Next is we have to repeat the process as the rated power of both generators are identical. <clears throat> so this Q max should be 60 and this should be minus 20. M base should be 117. X source 0.2. This should be 0.15. Okay, so we are done with the generator data, uh, which is comparatively complicated as compared to the other data. So next we have to add the transmission line data. For adding the transmission line data, I have to see which conductor I have to use. So let's go back to our initial base case these two transmission lines are 50 km and the conductor is in length and voltage of the buses is 132 kV so in order to add the transmission line data you have to consult the excel file and don't use this table because this is not going to be modified uh, you have to use this table line parameter calculator and just go to 132 kV and links conductor you have to add the transmission line and length over here it means in this table only one change has to be made which is the length of your transmission line so length is 50 kilometer okay now you can see my uh, resistance and reactances uh, have been modified and I have to consider only the positive sequence ones not the zero sequence ones because I'm going to perform the load flow analysis not the short circuit analysis so uh, this is links and what I can do I can copy these three values this is there are two ways to enter the data so first of all I'm going to discuss the shortcut then the uh, simple method right so I can copy these three values and then I can see this line is between bus 1 and 101 I can go to network data branches and AC line means I have to see where my transmission lines uh, are added so I have to consider this line that is bus 1 and 101 and I have to go to RXB option RXP right so simply once you will have this sort of block you can simply control V and you can see your line impedances have been added 0 0.0551 is the resistance and you can see the values are the same and you have to press the enter key after uh, doing the control V operation once I press the enter you can see this notification and just ignore it it means you have changed the zero sequence or sorry zero impedance line uh, with some uh, specified impedance right similarly uh, I can add the same uh, impedances in the second line which is also between bus 1 and 101 as the lengths are identical conductors are identical and voltages of the buses are identical so that's why there is no need to make any change now let's come back to the diagram just check this transmission line by double clicking it you can see resistance reactance and shunt charging have been added right so instead of adding one value uh, independently you have added all the values simultaneously now i'm just specifying this length of as my reference but this is not basically used in computation okay, just 
this is 50 this is not going to be used in any sort of competitions and next uh, and major uh, uh, you can say uh, the rating which you have to specify is the MBA rating of the line so that depends upon the conductor which you are using so for a uh, Lynx conductor the MBA rating is 112 so you can specify this 112 this is just like uh, the rating which you usually specify in BWS uh, the surge impedance loading so this depends upon the conductor of uh, which conductor you are using for your transmission line so this is 112 similarly I can do the same process for this transmission line and this is 112 okay this is 40 kilometer length conductor One zero one and two zero one. Okay. Since we have not changed the conductor, that's why the rating is kept identical and lastly I have a 10 kilometer dock over here so these are 66 kV buses you can see the voltage level for this conductor is 66 then this is control C and then just go this is 401 and 501 bus so 401 501 just copy paste it or you can simply add just double click the transmission line and add each value independently I can add thermal rating over here just drag it over here and you can basically add the rating over here so rating for the dock conductor is 39 I can add that over here Okay, our uh, next length, the length of this was 10 kilometer. Okay, so uh, this completes my uh, transmission line data. I have added the generator data, G transmission line data. You can see RXP, the length and the rating. These uh, five quantities you have to specify. And remember, don't save anything in Excel after making the changes, right? So I am just making changes of length over here. But uh, once I will close this file, I will not save any changes, right? For future use of the same uh, document. Okay, next, uh, I have to add the transformer data. So far, let's uh, come back to our base case. Let's see this uh, uh, transformer, which is added between bus number 201 and 301. So bus number 201 and 301. Okay, this is transformer one. Okay, let's go to the transformer section. And you can see uh, those uh, two buses were 66 slash uh, 11 kV. So the rating is 2026. Now 2026 means this is without fan and this is with fan. So with fan you have uh, enhanced uh, rating. So uh, you can check over here that whether you have 2026 transformer. So we have uh, 132 slash 11 kV. 2026 and you can see over here this was this transformers was inserted between 132 kb bus and 11 kb bus so this validates uh, also that this rating transformer is used for 
this voltage level 2026 20, right and next uh, thing I, uh, I have to see is the percentage reactance now percentage reactance is 10% at 20 MVA base so I have to check whether my percentage reactance means this quantity at the 20 MVA base sorry this is the transformer 2026 and uh, this is 10% at 20 you can see base MV is 20 but my percentage reactance is not 10 but it is 11 so I have to change it and make it a 10 and then I have to see the reactance in per unit at 100 MVA base so this table uh, is uh, by default formulated otherwise you can use the per unit analysis uh, for converting the um, transformer uh, per unit from uh, the old base to a new base but uh, in this table all the formulas have been integrated and just what you have to do you have to change the percentage reactance uh, and um, you have to cross check whether your base MVA is same or not and just add this value at 100 MVA base in your PSAC so this is 0.5 So over here I can specify my reactance as 0.5 and uh, currently I'm not using any tap changer and uh, in rating you can specify without pen or with pen. So um, I'm specifying the ratings with pen that is the upper rating and as it has been specified in your manual that you have to use an upper limit you can use 20 as well. So this is 26 and I can simply press the enter key. Okay. For the next transformer, which is between 132 and 11 kV, uh, sorry, 66 kV, 132 66 kV, and the rating is 40 MVA. So let's see, 132 slash 66 kV, you can see, you can use a 40 MVA transformer. And next, I have to see the percentage reactance. The percentage reactance is 14% at 40 MVA base. So uh, this is 14%, 40 MVA base. So I can simply uh, add this value in PSSE, that is 0.35. This is 0.35 and uh, upper rating is so this is only single rated transformer so you can simply add 40. Okay. Lastly, I have transformers between 66 uh, slash 11 that is 10 13. So um, uh, instead of 66 11, I have 122 11, but I can use this as far as the rating is the same. So I can use this 10 13 transformer, which is for 122 slash 11 instead of 66 slash 11, but as we are using the standard values which are being used in our system. So uh, over here, you, you have 10% reactance at 10 MVA base. Let's cross check it. This is 10%, this is 10 MVA. So you can simply add this one in reactance of the transformer. And this was 10, 13 transformer. I can add the upper limit that is 13 over here. Okay. Now I have completed my uh, transmission line data, machine data, and the transformer data. So uh, uh, before moving on to the uh, to the load side, I will first of all add uh, the bus data also. So this bus number one. For that, I have to see the uh, this diagram. This bus one. Uh, 
is specified as bus A. Okay, now you can uh, see that when once you add a buses in your PCC, uh, you have a single digit, three digit, and if you keep on adding, you may have four digit or five digit uh, buses as well. So this is for your ease. Uh, you can set the uh, single digit or two digit for. Uh, HV buses and um, the five digit or the seven digit buses which are numerous in number you can set those for 11 KV buses for easy identification from your SLD right this is just for your remembrance and there is no um, as such logic behind it uh, the, uh, behind numbering right so this is um, bus number one and you can name it as bus A and this is uh, generator bus so I can select generator bus and the base voltage is 132 kV right so these four quantities you have to uh, specify means you have to uh, select the code of the bus you have to specify the name of the bus and the base voltage okay next <clears throat> this is bus B and this is uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, non generator bus, and this is again 132 kV, right? Okay. Now uh, I am selecting swing bus as uh, this bus is being considered as your swing bus. There is no hard and fast rule to uh, select the first uh, bus as your swing bus like uh, um, in P, uh, PWS your bus 1 is by default selected as your swing bus bus but in PSAC it gives you op option you can select any bus as your swing bus and in practically your location of swing bus is uh, uh, in the middle of uh, your power system right so this is bus number uh, c bus c right and uh, this is uh, my swing bus and this is 132 kv right okay this is 11 kv and this is a non generator bus and the bus name is bus D right next I have a uh, bus D you may uh, you might uh, experience a difference in the colors uh, in different uh, you can say versions but because uh, that depends upon the initial setting uh, and I will set the colors later on right so this is bus E and this is again a non generator bus and 66 kV completes my uh, network data for uh, the buses next I will add the load data so uh, for loads you can see this load is 24 megawatt and let's see the power factor of this load 24 megawatt and 0.9 is the power factor let's go back this is first load which is 24 megawatt and you can simply compute q using p tangent theta and cos of theta is 0.9 and real power is 24 so your reactive power comes out to be 11.62 okay uh, next we have this and you can see over here uh, you have 150 and uh, power factor was 0.9 and 150 megawatt was the real power so over here you can have 
72.64 lastly I have 20 megawatt 0.85 power factor and this is 12.39 so this completes our load entry okay uh, as per manual uh, we have added the machine data right we have specified the uh, rated power of the machine, the upper and lower limits of the real power, the upper and lower limits of Q, but not Q gen. And we have specified the uh, reactance of the machine and the reactance of the generator step up transformer and M base of your generator. I have not changed this uh, factor for the time being. Next, I have added the transmission line data. I have added lengths and the rates and the impedances of the transmission line and positive sequence impedances, right, from the Excel file. And then from the Excel file, I have added the uh, impedance of the transformer based upon uh, the percentage reactance and uh, the rating of the transformer. I have added this value and the upper limit of this rating right so this completes the transformer data and lastly I have add, simply added the load data from the given real power values and the given power factors I have computed the reactor power and simply added P and Q for the loads so uh, now our um, case has been completed now I can save this case I can save my SLD and you i can name this as lab 6 lab 6 you can say part 1 okay and i have to save the network data also you can see the network data is saved uh, with SAV extension and the SLD is saved with .SLD extension. Uh, some of you uh, may also see .CNV extension that is the converted case. But uh, since we are not performing the stability analysis, so um, that uh, we, we are only concerned with .SAV, right? So let's see, you can see over here uh, that you have .SAV and .CNV as well. But since we are only performing the load flow case, so .CNV, uh, we haven't performed any conversion steps, so both of these will be identical. So uh, let's select uh, lab 6 part 1. This will be my network data. Okay, now uh, the network data has been saved and the SLD is also has also been saved, right? So um, if your SLD appears in pink color, like all the items appear in pink color, then you can check in your network data that none of the items will appear over here. The reason is your this option bind items was unchecked if this option is not checked then your SLD will appear as pink and the data of that SLD will not appear over here or the other way around is if you like open any SLD but you have not opened the uh, network data corresponding to that SLD again that SLD is going to appear in pink color so both files should be opened within the same uh, window that is dot SLD and dot SAV in order to perform any type of case study right these two files are uh, essential so uh, next I have to perform the load flow so I can perform the load flow using power flow going to in power flow solution solution and then I can select this option right so by default uh, it uses this method that is Newton Robson I'm not going to change it and I can set as flat start because uh, in load flow we usually have a flat start that is one per unit voltage is assumed initially at all the buses. Okay, solve it. 
now this window is also uh, essential you should have this so, uh, sort of uh, notification that is your tolerance is reached in um, these iterations and this is the largest mismatch if you will have uh, like um, uh, a notification like your system is blown after seven iterations like any such notification which indicates that your system is blown up it means uh, either you have entered any data incorrectly or there is some mistake so uh, in order for convergence of your uh, system uh, you should have this sort of indication in your output bar file if your output bar is not visible you can go into view option and you can select this right so this output bar is uh, really essential in order to monitor your uh, the results so now my system has been converged uh, and I have performed the load flow analysis. You can see now you can see the real and vector power flows through transformers, transmission lines and so on. Before a reviving system back to its uh, normal state means uh, some of the buses might be experiencing over voltage and some of the buses might be experiencing under voltage. You can see over here uh, this is experiencing under voltage that is 0.7 because the nominal range is 1.05 and 0.95. So voltages lesser than 0.95 are treated as under voltages and voltages higher than 1.05 are treated as over voltage. So this is the plus minus 5% tolerance band that is allowed. So uh, before checking that, I want to uh, set the color scheme. So for that, I have to follow these steps. I have to go in diagram properties, diagram annotation. First of all, I have to uh, set my per unit result in up to two decimal places right because um, in order to see whether voltage is higher than 1.05 or not my per unit result should be expressed uh, up to two decimal places right and load flows of the branches should be indicated right so these options should be retained as it is and I want to see the angle of the buses also so I will select this option and next I will go to diagram range checking and over here I will set the color scheming for various buses since in this system I have only three types of buses that is 132, 66 and 11 kV so what I can do I can write 11 over here 66 over here 132 over here and over here I can write 220 but uh, no 220 kV is present in our system. Let's um, keep it like this. Okay, 11 kV, the color of 11 kV should be blue. Okay, the 66 kV is green in color. And 132 kV is black in color. So uh, my uh, using the colors of the bus voltages, I can easily figure out which buses are 132 kV, which are 66 and which are 11 kV. Moreover, I want to see my which line or transmission line or transformer is being overloaded. So I will use, uh, I will check this option and the overloading will be indicated by red color, let's suppose. You can select any color uh, you like and then I will select the bus voltage limits also that is my over voltages at buses will be indicated the bus color will be changed to pink color if uh, the bus volt, uh, is voltage is higher than 1.05 and if the bus is experiencing under voltage then let's change its color to sky okay so now you can see my these buses uh, all are experiencing under voltage so now in order to revive system back to its normal state that is this transmission line should not be overloaded there should be no overloading in the system first of all you have to check this your bus voltages should be within range and thirdly your machines should not have each indication with 
their reactive powers when the a, when uh, the alphabet h is written with the reactive power of the machine it means the upper limit of the reactive power is being violated you can see q max specified was 60 and over here you are having 61.3 so this is being uh, violated that's why h is being written so uh, in normal state of the machine this h should not be written rather you should have r right and secondly the most important thing machines should not have a negative uh, reactive power negative reactive power means the machines are acting as motors not as generators right so first of all um, I have performed these steps that is I have set the uh, color scheme and next I will revive the system back to its a uh, normal state so first of all I will change the tap of the transformer now you can see i have all transformers as step down transformer this is 132 slash 66 kv transformer 132 slash 11 kv transformer this is 166 uh, kv slash 11 kv transformer and my tap changer is installed on the high voltage side so uh, basically if i will reduce the tap setting on the high voltage side then my voltage on the secondary that is low voltage side is going to be increased so in a step down transformer if you will reduce the voltage on the secondary side is going to be increased and the minimum voltage which or minimum tap setting which you can have for transformer is 0.95 and you have to follow the standard while uh, traversing from uh, the 1 per unit to 0.95 in tap setting that is you can move only in steps of 0.0125 this is our grid standard so uh, we have to follow it that is we cannot change the tap directly from 1.05 to 0.95 we can change it only in multiples of 0.0125 so let's set the minimum value 0.95 or you can simply have one uh, let's suppose one and 0.0125 this comes out to be 0.9875 if I move in steps of 0 0.0125 right so this is 0.9875 let's do this okay uh, not much change has been observed so let's change all tab settings to 0.9875 in order to increase the voltage on the secondary side Okay, I will try with this option 0.95 and then again solve the system. Still, I haven't uh, achieved any desirable results. So, I will try the second option. Second option is you can increase the scheduled vol voltages at your machine buses or the PV buses. Like you can change this scheduled voltage up till 1.05, right? Usually the voltage by default of your PV buses is set at 1.02 but I am setting it at 1.05. Okay, before uh, making this change you can see the H symbol uh, written with the Q has been changed to R I, when I change the uh, tab settings of these transformers. Right, so next I will change uh, the voltage schedule voltage of this machine also uh, and let's see okay now you can see the voltages at these buses have been uh, improved voltage at this bus has been improved this has also been improved now the problem is with these two buses right and this transmission line 
this is R and again we have problem over here also. So I can try my third option which is inserting capacitor banks. Now I can insert a fixed capacitor or a switch capacitor. If I want to insert a fixed capacitor, the capacitor rating should be nearly equal to the rating of the load connected at the load bus and capacitors are always installed at 11 kb buses not at high voltage buses so i will install a fixed capacitor let's take a fixed capacitor and install it over here so now now um, in b shunt mvr i have to specify the um, shunt charging that is going to be uh, provided by this capacitor or the reactive power that is going to be provided by this capacitor so that should be nearly close to the reactive power of the load connected at this bus and uh, again i have to follow the standard the standard is that the uh, reactive power of the capacitor should be increased in steps of 1.2 or the, this should be the multiple of 1.2 so I can have you can like uh, let's install a capacitor of 10.8 MVR right which is a multiple of 1.2 and close to 11.6 and let's see the system response so now I'm having over voltage at this bus. Okay, I can uh, basically revert the cap setting of this transformer and in order to reduce the voltage at this bus and let's see. Okay, now it's fine. Okay. Uh, again, uh, in order to revive the voltages at these buses, I can insert a fixed capacitor or a switch capacitor. So, uh, in order to insert a switch capacitor, you can uh, see this that uh, you have to follow these steps. Like, uh, in order to configure your switch shunt, you have to select uh, this mode. And for a detailed uh, explanation of these modes, you can basically go to the uh, folder in which your uh, PSSC has been installed. This is in PTI folder and in docs and you can have the, these are these two documents are program application guide and this is program operational manual so uh, consulting uh, these three documents you can uh, easily figure out what will be the impact of changing the mode of the uh, switch shunt but briefly i'm going to tell you that in the switch shunt you can have different blocks and in each block you can have different steps so let's insert a switch uh, shunt at this bus. Okay, just simply check OK. And you can see I can have uh, different blocks and each block can have at max nine steps, right? And each step can be of 1.2 MVR. Again, the B initial should be close to the MVR of the load. Right, so this is 12.4. You can simply set it as uh, any multiple of 1.2, but should be close to this, right? And you can add different blocks. Okay, so this is again you have to avoid uh, capacitors at high voltage buses. Capacitors are always installed at 11 kb buses, and these are the uh, this is the voltage band. Basically, the voltage band should be. Uh, this as you have to uh, increase the voltage uh, at 11 kb buses you in order to regulate that you have to give the voltage band also so this should be continuous control voltage right Okay, this should be 1.05 it means um, in order to have the voltage within this band this is going to add the capacitors like that, capacitance like that, right? Okay. 
can be initial Okay, now you can see I have R with my both machines. It means my machines are operating within the reactive power limits. Reactive power limits are not being violated for the machines. Neither do they have the uh, negative sign, right? I'm implying the motor action. Secondly, uh, bus voltages are also within the limits. No transmission line and transformer is being overloaded. Right, so this is basically you can say a uh, compensated system, and uh, I have used uh, two capacitor banks one fixed and one switch, and modified the tap setting of these uh, three transformers. I can also change uh, in order to optimize the system, I can also use a single capacitor bank and can play with the um, tap setting of these two transformers so they, it depends upon how you can compensate your system so uh, every student is going to have a different approach in order to compensate the system you can either change the uh, bus voltage uh, at PV buses that is you can change the schedule of your um, um, machine connected at the PV bus right or the swing bus basically this is the generator excitation control in order to increase the voltage at the generator you perform the uh, field excitation control and using that you can increase the voltage at the bus and the maximum voltage which you can uh, have it that is 1.05 and you can see my bus voltages at these two buses are 1.05 right so this is the uh, approach number one that is you can play with the field excitation control of the machines secondly you can play with the tap settings of the transformers the maximum limit of tap setting is 1.05 minimum tap setting is 0.95 and you have to move in steps of 0.0125 means you cannot select 0 0.96, 0 0.97 or any value of your choice. You have to follow the standard. The third choice is you can either use the fixed capacitor from here or the switch uh, capacitor from here. Right. So, uh, the benefit of switch shunt or fixed shunt is that it automatically adds uh, blocks depending upon the uh, reactive power requirement in the system. Like I have added two blocks, each of uh, uh, each having nine steps and. Uh, one step is of 1.2 MVR so basically I have two uh, blocks that is 9 into 1.2 and 9 into 1.2 so depending upon the reactive power requirement it is going to add or delete the steps uh, from the blocks instead of adding the fixed uh, reactive power that is 11.8 in case of the fixed like if I have added the fixed capacitor it's going to add or inject 11.8 fixed MVR in the system System. but switch shunt is going to inject the MVR that uh, is uh, being uh, provided according to the specified blocks that is going to dictate the uh, upper limit of the MVR that is uh, going to be being provided by the switch shunt right so this completes the simple tutorial of a 7 bus system and I hope uh, it clarifies right Thank you.